Here's a pretty cool shop project I wanted to share with you. This is a positioning stop for a milling machine. And the cool part about this is that it was made all on a manual milling machine. Here's how it works. So it's bolted onto the table and then uh, it's used to locate, locate the workpiece uh, in a repetitive fashion here. So when I do a project like this, I usually try to make some notes um, and gather my thoughts together. I also like to use some layout die and then I'll scribe, scribe lines on the parts uh, just to give me some guidelines on where the holes ought to be and uh, where, where different um, operations need to take place. This is mostly just guidelines just to keep me on track to uh, double check, make sure I don't do any, make any errors. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to bolt the workpiece onto a sacrificial tooling plate. And this plate is going to be used uh, to be mount the workpiece onto the rotary table. So here, this is the workpiece. This is going to be the base of the uh, positioning stop. And uh, in the milling machine, I'm going to spot some holes and then drill and tap the holes. When tapping holes, it's super important to keep the tap uh, you know, perfectly straight with the hole. So here's a trick that I do sometimes. I'll mount a tap in the chuck with the, uh, the chuck directly over the hole I'm going to tap. And I use that tap as a guide to keep the uh, tapping handle you know, perpendicular. Then once I get enough threads engaged where the tap is going in straight, I'll finish it up by hand. There's a lot of different ways to do that, but that's just one of them. This is the mounting piece that the workpiece is going to be held with onto the rotary table. Nothing fancy here, just drilling and countersinking some holes. And here I'm going to mill some slots uh, for mounting it. And when I use an end mill in the milling machine, I always like to use these end mill holders rather than a collet. The collets are just notorious for letting the end mills slip out. And before you know it, you're cutting much deeper than you originally planned. The bridge port does a good job here. I'm um, just uh, making the slots on the end of the plate. That's it. The mounting plate's done, and now we just bolt the workpiece on top of the mounting plate and then go back to the milling machine for some more setup. I'm going to use a rotary table quite a bit in this project, and uh, one of the first things that I do is find the center of the table using a little dial indicator. And then once I'm there, I'll just zero out the digital readout. Then I use the dial indicator to help me position the workpiece directly over the center of the table. Once it's in the center of the table, I also use the dial indicator to help tram in the workpiece so that it's perpendicular to the x-axis of the milling machine. When the workpiece is centered and squared, then I need to remove the backlash in the rotary table. So I'll use a dial indicator here to just mark the position of the table, and then I unscrew the feet screw here to remove the backlash. Then I screw it back in, going clockwise, until I get back to my original position. This eliminates all of the backlash in the screw, and then I can zero the dial here, and then all of the readings on the dial become meaningful when I turn the knob to the clock, turn the knob clockwise. Using a roughing end mill, I'll make the first cut here. And then fast forward a little bit. Screw on the rotary table is always turned clockwise. This way we don't introduce any more backlash into the, um, into the dial. Now we just lower the end mill down and I finish making the second cut. And this is still a roughing cut using a uh, roughing style uh, end mill here in the bridge port. Now, using a finishing end mill, I'm going to use the x-axis feed on the bridge port to mill the straight section or the flat section of the part until I get to the center line. And then I use the rotary table to rotate the part to uh, mill the finishing pass on the end. Turn the part till it gets to 180 degrees here. And then I use the x-axis feed again on the bridge port to go back and finish off the, uh, the other side of the part. Using the y-axis screw, we'll just square up the back of the part, and now the outer perimeter of the part is complete. I'm going to change to a, a ball mill, uh, and this is just to add a little 
uh, artistic detail on the top of the part. Nothing fancy here. Um, just go around and I make two passes, uh, one for a finishing pass and one for a roughing pass using the same tool. Using an end mill, I'm just going to clean up the very top surface here. This is a little 45 degree chamfering tool, and this adds some of the craftsman's touch onto the part. Now the top of the part's done, and I'm gonna remove it and remount it so that I can work on the bottom side of it. Here I'm using an end mill just to make a little relief cut uh, on the bottom side of the base. Then we're gonna fast forward here to kind of speed things up. We can now take the part off of the plate and go into a regular milling vise. Here we're gonna do the slot, and I'm using a half inch roughing end mill. I'm gonna do this in two steps. Uh, I really like these end mills in the bridge port, and um, if you ever start running into any problems with chatter, simply slow the spindle down until things smooth out. Here I'm drilling out the bolt hole, and then a real light chamfer. This is for craftsmanship. Then I spot drill, and then drill a hole for a rolled pin. And this is just gonna keep the, uh, um, the post from rotating once it gets bolted together. Flip it over and then uh, counter bore for the, um, the fastener. Then here we go, we add just a little more craftsmanship with this chamfer. That's good stuff right there. Uh, here I'm going to stand the end, the part up on, on end so we can kind of deburr and chamfer the details on the back side. I'm just using a machina square and put it in the vise. Then I use my chamfering tool, and this is all just done by eye. Just kind of um, uh, move the table back and forth and, and just whatever looks about right here. Nothing fancy. Um, and then everything's gone and f is moving and uh, fast forward so, so we don't take up a lot of time here. Now the post, pretty simple. Um, just going to put in the vise and square up the ends. And this is something that I certainly can do in a lathe, but uh, this, I wanted this to be a, a milling machine project. Then I'm going to, then I'm going to use a V-block to hold the post uh, in the vise. And then we find the center of the, the post using a, another dial indicator in the spindle. And then once we find the center, we drill and tap uh, the mounting hole in it. Notice that I'm always using my spray bottle of coolant. Okay, so back to tapping holes. This time I'm gonna use a spring-loaded tap guide. So this fits in the spindle, and it's just a, a little spring pin that keeps the tap centered. Then I'll use a tap wrench, tap this hole um, by hand, and, um, and this makes things pretty easy. It's super important to keep the tap straight, so that's why we use the guide. Then we uh, drill a little hole here for the um, the little roll pin, and this is ready to put together. So tap the roll pin in and then bolt, bolt the two parts together. These parts turned out really nice. The next part's gonna be the knuckle. And um, um, I'm going to make this out of just some scrap material that, that uh, I found laying around in the shop. So at the bandsaw, I cut off a little block of material here and then um, um, go to the belt sander and just deburr it. I keep the belt sander right next to the bandsaw just to knock off any of these sharp edges um, you know, after I cut them off. Then at the uh, back in the bridge port, um, I'm just going to drill uh, drill and countersink a hole here. And I'm going to use this to mount the workpiece back on the rotary table like we did earlier. 
Okay, and same as before on the rotary table, I will find the center of the rotary table. Uh, and here I'm using a little different dial indicator, but anything will work, just depends on what you've got in your shop. Once I find the center of the rotary table, I will mount the workpiece in the center of the table using another dial indicator here um, to locate the, the workpiece. Once everything's in position, here I'm gonna add another clamp just because this fixture allows that option. And then we start milling it. Same as before, I rough mill it and then go back to a finishing end mill. We're fast forwarding here, just to kind of speed things up. The new finishing end mill really leaves a nice finish. And then here we're adding that craftsman's uh, touch with the um, chamfering tool. This is a different tool that we're gonna to use to do the end of the knuckle. We could use the rotary table like we did before, but let's try something different. It's a, it's a, a quarter rounding tool or an edge rounding tool. And uh, I'm gonna use that in the uh, spindle. This is a, a really clunky tool that uh, requires some pretty low spindle speeds and some very light cuts. So uh, a little bit of layout die on the end of the part helps uh, to visually see what's happening and uh, we'll just make some very light cuts, several of them. Then we flip the part over, and um, before you know it, we've got a, a beautiful uh, nose radius here on this part. Then we're gonna drill the big cross hole. First, I'll use a dial indicator to find the center of the hole, and then I'm gonna drill this in a couple steps. The bridge port doesn't have a lot of horsepower to do it in one, one shot. So um, first we'll use a small drill and then a bigger drill. And uh, then we'll finish up with a reamer. I always look at drills as a roughing tool and uh, I drilled undersized and now I'm using a reamer to bring the hole in right to the exact size that I want. Using a piece of material for the post I check the fit and it looks pretty nice. Now I'm gonna drill the other cross hole. And here I'm gonna show you how to find the edge of the part uh, using a wiggler. So this uh, is an edge finding tool called a wiggler and the ball on the end is 200 thousandths in diameter. So as we approach the workpiece, the, uh, the tool stops wiggling. And as we get closer and closer and closer, we finally get to a point where the ball will break away. And at that moment, we know that the, um, the center of the spindle is exactly half the diameter of the, of the ball away from the edge. We do this on both sides, and then we know exactly where we're at. Um, we can then use the uh, digital readout to put the spindle exactly where we want to drill the holes. And here, I drill it and ream it to make sure that it's perfectly centered where I want it to be. The last operation for this part is to slit it. So this is a slitting saw on a homemade arbor. And um, um, the way that I use this is that I will use the quill on the bridge port to bring the saw blade down and just touch the top of the workpiece and then lock the quill in place. Then I new use the knee adjustment. I zero the scale here to zero and then simply crank the table up to the exact height that I want it to be using the, um, the dial here as I'm reading the numbers. Once the saw is exactly where I want it to be, then just simply feed it in by hand. Again, notice that I keep lots of lubricant handy in a little spray bottle, and um, this all goes pretty smooth. So far, the project is coming along very nicely. Let's take about 20 seconds just so I can exp uh, tell you a little bit about Beaumont Metalworks. We make belt grinders. This is our classic KMG belt grinder, and we've been producing this for about 20 years. Recently, over the last couple years, we just offered in a new uh, belt grinder model to the line. This is the KMG TX. It stands for Tilting Extreme, 
and it is our most versatile uh, belt grinder. This uh, not only is vertical, but it also tilts over horizontal uh, just to add more versatility. If you're interested in belt grinder, visit our website, BeaumontMetalWorks.com, and uh, drop us a line. We'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay, let's get back to the project. Here I'm making a bushing, nothing that you haven't seen before. Uh, we're just simply um, drilling and reaming a piece of material here, and then I use the slitting saw to cut it off to the length that I want. Again, this could be a lathe project, but I wanted it to uh, be a milling machine project and just show some versatility. Now for the craftsman's touch on this workpiece. I'm gonna go back to the rotary table and I'm gonna mount the bushing in the rotary table and using all of the techniques that we talked about earlier, I'm gonna use one of these little quarter rounding tools uh, on the top of the bushing and just put a nice uh, radius on the top edge. The last part is this cross pin, and um, we've already discussed all of the um, techniques to do this. Uh, here I just simply um, drill a cross hole in it, and that completes all of the pieces. So let's head over to the bench and put it together. I'm gonna use a file just to lightly deburr any edges that need it. Uh, here's a little Scotch-Brite finishing pad just to um, kind of add a nice finish to, the, to uh, all of the components. And then assemble it. The cross pin gets the bushing, and then here is our little locating, locating shaft. Uh, it goes through here. Then we have the knuckle. Put the knuckle on the post. And then uh, I use one of these locking levers, and we use these locking levers quite a bit in the shop uh, on our belt grinders and for fixturing and stuff. This is a nice tool. It's built very heavy and will last a lifetime. This last clip shows me using the work rest um, on the, back on the bridge port, drilling a, uh, a small production run of pieces. Um, and here I'm gonna run about 60, 80 pieces, I guess. Uh, and uh, the work rest just really makes things much easier. So we hope you like this video. And if you do, just always feel free to leave us a comment. We'd love to know what you're thinking. Um, visit our website, look at our products, and uh, follow us. And thanks for watching.